Hey, 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 welcome back to Equipping You Podcast. This is Season 9, Episode 10. Yes. We've once again reached the top of the mountain, Alan. We have reached the top of the mountain. So uh, we're coming to you today from Ohio, near Dublin, Ohio. Home of 109 concrete ears of corn, known as the Field of Corn, to celebrate one of two things, Alan, either my sense of humor or the agricultural base of Ohio. I am certain that it's not celebrating your sense of humor. So I'm going to go with the agricultural base of Ohio. Do I win the prize? You do. You win the prize. Yeah, all right. I knew it. It There is no no prize, but if there was a prize, you would have won the prize. Well, that's great. I'm Terry, Church Ministries Leader for the Alliance. And I am Alan, the Director of Development for the Eastern PA District of the Alliance. So this is our auto, not auto, I always want to say auto. It is our biographical yep. episode of the year yep. where we just pick out an Alliance pastor yep. and uh, chat with them about their life and ministry. And today we're talking to Mark Porter, mm. who's the pastor of Regeneration Church yep. in the uh, Ocean Beach section of San Diego, yep. California. And uh, you've had a little bit of uh, connection with uh, Mark. What, what, do you, what do you think about this guy? I mean, he's legit. He is legit. I mean, he loves Jesus. His life is a walking testimony to being transformed uh, you know, he'll unpack some of that journey. I'll let him do all that, but it's it's just proof that there's power in the gospel, power in the death and resurrection of Jesus, and that really it's just us trusting Jesus, and he does all the heavy lifting. Yep. You yep. know, it's amazing, uh, and his story is a great testimony to that. So you're going to love his story. You're going to love the stories he tells as uh, we jump in. To this episode, so grab yourself a caramel latte from OB Beans in San Diego. Sit Perfect. back, relax. Here we go. So it's our privilege to uh, welcome to the podcast today, Mark Porter from San Diego. Mark, welcome. Thanks for doing this for us, man. Yeah, thank you, Terry. It's a pleasure to be with you guys. Yeah, so uh, we'd love to hear your spiritual journey and how, how you came to faith in, in Jesus Christ and how you, how you ended up in ministry. Yeah, uh, so so my life didn't start off uh, um, with the Lord, no church background, really uh, had, had no concept of who God was. Um, good parents, good, good, good upbringing, just no church background whatsoever. Um, uh, my parents got divorced when I was 13, um, and that kind of shook shook me up a little bit, kind of sent me on the on the wrong path, if you will, um, using some drugs, drinking on the weekend. Um, my mom, after she gets divorced, she marries uh, actually her first husband from high school, um, and they started going to church. Um, and so when I'd go visit her, I'd kind of go to church on Sunday, but I didn't really, I wasn't hearing the message. I wasn't really ready to receive it. My life continued to spiral further and further. Um, into darkness, more drugs, more alcohol. Um, I ended up in San Diego in 94, right after my father had passed away in 1994. And I didn't deal with his death at all. I kind of ran from his death more than anything. That's why I came out to San Diego. I I came here to surf, but I kind of came here running from from anything I knew. Didn't deal with the grief, didn't deal with uh, anything that was going on in my life. Um, and I spiraled further and further into, into drugs and alcohol. Uh, as my mom uh, started going to church, started going to an Alliance church uh, in Newton, Iowa, uh, called uh, Community Heights Alliance Church. Yeah. Um, so again, when I would go visit her, I, I'd, I'd hear the gospel, I'd, I'd hear the, the, the speaker, but it just, it just never really resonated with me. Um, one night as I was getting in trouble with the law, as I was getting in more and more trouble with drinking and drugs, and my life was just a complete train wreck by this time. I reached out to my mom, and I really think this is when the Spirit of God started to move in my life. Um, I, I called her and I said, "Mom, I need I need help. I got to get out of here. I can't I can't fix myself. Nothing I'm doing is is working." And she uh, said, "I can get you to Iowa. I can get you into treatment um, if you'll come out here." So her and my aunt actually came down 
and picked me up in San Diego and drove me back. I couldn't even get on the airplane. My life was was just wow. a mess. I was I was so heavily involved in, in drugs and alcohol that I was going through withdrawal. So they took me to the hospital and they drove me the three days I think it took us to get back to Iowa. So I was in this rehab facility. Only time you could get out was to go to church on Sunday. So I took advantage of that just to really get out of the rehab. And I went to church and again, I would hear the message, but it really wasn't, wasn't resonating with me. And I think I got sober for 30 days, um, would still go to church with my mom and my stepdad on Sundays, but just, again, just it, nothing was, was happening. I was still trying to, to, to run my own life. Uh, this went on for a couple more years in and out of jail, in and out of rehab, uh, in and out of prison at this time. Um, for some DUIs, I had a couple burglaries. Just my life was it was a mess. December twenty first, fast forward, December twenty first, two thousand and seven, uh, I get arrested for another DUI. I uh, was going back to the same jail I'd been in. I've been in nineteen. I've been to jail nineteen times at this point. I've been in rehab twenty one times at this point. I've been to prison twice at this point. And on that night, I went back into the same jail cell. They put this orange suit on me again. I walked in there and I was just defeated. I, I didn't know where to turn. I didn't really mm. even know what to do anymore. I remember thinking to myself, you know, how, how did I ever get here? How did this, I, I, if I would have ever dreamed growing up, this is where my life would be. I, I, I could have never imagined that this would be, be where I was. And and I think this is the first time I prayed an honest prayer for the first time. And I remember saying, uh, Jesus, I don't know who you are right now. And I don't even know who I am right now. Uh, but if you'll help me, I'll do anything you want me to do. Um, and I wish I could tell you I saw this great light or I had this great <laughs> epiphany at that at that point, but I didn't I didn't really feel anything. But I I, I got up off the floor and got in this bed, um, this this little two inch mat that they give you for a bed, and, and I fell asleep. And I sh- I should have never fallen asleep that night. I was so high and so wasted that night. I should have been up for days, and, and and I slept like a like a baby that night. I woke up and my mom had dropped off. Um, uh, there's three things you could get in the jail as you're waiting to go to prison. You can get socks, underwear, and a Bible. And my mom dropped all three of those off. And, and I remember I looked at the Bible and I didn't really even know what I was doing. And I opened up the book and I said, Lord, if this is what you want me to do, I'll, I'll start reading it. And I actually started reading the book of Hosea for some reason. I have no idea why. I think it was just a short book. And <laughs> yeah, Testament. what a place I, to I start. I just this. <laughs> <laughs> so I started reading, yeah. reading Hosea. And I, I, I remember reading going, this is a wild story. And I, but I couldn't put <laughs> yes. it down. Yeah. <laughs> just, it was, it was, uh, it was interesting to say the least, but I, I couldn't put it down. And, um, and that just started me on this journey. And I, I went after that, I went to prison for, for another four years after that. Um, <clears throat> reading the Bible. My second day I get to prison, I'm reading in the day room and in, in, in the morning. And this, this older gentleman comes up to me and he says, Porter, do you know what you're reading? And I said, man, I have no idea. And he says, I'll tell you what, if you're serious about getting out of, getting out of here and you're serious about what you're doing, uh, I'll tell you what to read every night or every morning. And we'll get together every night and we'll go over what we're reading. I'll kind of, he's discipling me. I had no idea what, I just thought he was just telling me what to do. And I, I said, I said, yeah, I'd love to do it. And he said, he said, Jesus is the only way you're going to stay out of here. And I said, okay. He said, what you're doing is not working. If you want to try another way, let's do this. And he said, I'm going to give you 20 chapters every morning to read. And I was like, 20 chapters. <laughs> He's like, what else do you got to do? What you, you, you got, you're, you're here in prison. There's, there's nothing to do. And so, so I started reading and we started at, at Genesis and we, I'd read 20 chapters. We get together at night, he'd go over it. He'd ask me if I had any questions. He kind of explained some things to me and, if you're reading 20 chapters a day, you're, you're, you're done with the Bible in three months. Yeah. And so we, we read through it. I, I get through it somehow and, and things are starting to click and things are starting to sort of make sense. And I said, okay, Mr. Elam, what do we do now? And he said, we, we start over. So we jump back into Genesis. We read the whole thing over. Wow. But the, it was, it was, it was just crazy how the Lord had used that time and used this man to, to just immerse me in the word of God. Yeah. Um, to just over. And so, so this whole four years, I think I read through the Bible seven times. Um, and, and so that's really good. And, the, and the, the guy that taught me, he was a, he was an ex Muslim doing, doing a double life sentence on a double murder, who was a Muslim in the prison, who was the Imam of the prison for 27 years, has this radical encounter with Jesus becomes wow. a Christian, his whole family leaves him, they say, if you become a Christian, we're not going to give you any money, we'll never visit you again. We'll never see you again. And he said the, the 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 Lord Jesus appeared to him so magnificently he couldn't deny it. So he walked away from his family, he walked away from his faith, he walked away from everything, and started following the Lord and, and grabbed hold of me. And this this is a nation of Islam Muslim guy. He was an older 
kind of radical guy um, and started mentoring me, a black guy uh, mentoring, discipling a young white guy in prison, which is unheard of. Yeah. And it was just a beautiful, beautiful thing that, that, that happened there. Wow. Um, so that's what kind of got me going. In the, and there was more pieces, certainly, to that story. My mom was praying and praying and praying. Some older ladies in the church were praying and praying. And I always say, once you get some older ladies in the church praying for you, it's, it's pretty much over. It's done. Yeah. God, <laughs> God chased me down and, and, and did what he was going to do. Truth. They, they got that special line to heaven, man. Yeah, that's amazing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That is crazy. That is amazing. That what is a great story that is. Yeah. And I've heard pieces of that before, yeah. but it's great to hear you tell it the whole way through, man. That is beautiful stuff. Uh, so now, obviously, this man made a profound difference in your life, majorly shaping you, getting mm-hmm. immersed in the Word of God. Who are some other leaders that have influenced you in life and ministry along the way? Yeah, so so I, when I was in prison, I knew I was going to – I was hoping to parole to my mom's house back in Iowa – and I didn't actually parole. I ended up just serving my whole sentence out. Um, but I started writing some of the pastors that were in that town. And, and so I, I wrote 20 different pastors in that town and, and only got one reply back. And it was my mom's pastor, actually, an alliance pastor, Corey Stout is his name. And and he, Corey just spoke at our church last night, actually. It's kind wow. of uh, wild how it, it all came together. But he, he t- his life was completely different than mine. I, I talked last night. I said, I don't think Corey's ever been in trouble in his life. <laughs> I think the first word he said when the, when the doctor spanked him when he was born, I think he yelled out Jesus, and he went off and, and went straight into ministry. And, but that was, that was his life. Uh, but he took a chance on me. He, 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 I think as we wrote and as we corresponded, he saw that, that, that God was doing something there. I got out, uh, went straight to a prayer meeting. The first thing I did when, on, the, on the Tuesday I got out of prison was went to a prayer meeting he was having at the church. And and he kind of he, he kind of took me under his wing and he said, why don't you apply to, to Crown College and give it a shot and, and see if they would take you. I think God's got a calling on your life. I'd already been preaching and teaching in the prison, um, leading a leading a Bible study there. And it kind of evolved until where we had we, we were able to have our own inmate led service. And I was I was teaching that and still didn't really even know what I was doing. But that's what we, we continued to feel God was doing in my life. And so Corey got me into Crown College. Uh, let me do an internship at the at the Alliance Church. So really, the, the only church I know is is prison and the Alliance Church. I thought everything was Alliance. I thought everybody was Alliance. They should be. <laughs> and, they really should exactly, be. exactly, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so, so I've all, that's all I've all I've known, and and just thankful for Corey. Just thankful for him giving me a chance. Um, and then when we came out here to plant the church, uh, Dave Reynolds and Eric Olson were just mm, two huge. Yes. Uh, guys that, that really came behind me and, and, and they both poured into me and, and really not, not just being a pastor, but what is being a church planner? Do you feel the call to be a church planner? They just continued to pour and, they, and still continue to pour into my life. I talked to Dave at least uh, every six months and try to talk to Eric about the same. And so just two great guys that just helped, helped yeah, us and helped Dave. us to get where we are as a, as a church plan out here today. So unpack that whole church planning thing a little bit more. What led you to plant Regeneration Church in San Diego? What is it? What is it that really drives you in this uh, endeavor? You know, what kind of people you're trying to reach? That kind of thing. Yeah. So, so I, I I didn't really even know what a church planner was. Even as I took my first position, I was an Alliance pastor in Iowa at a. Quaker church with Dutch reformed people. I just say we were the most mixed up church in the world. Yeah. And the people had no idea who they were as, as, as their identity. It was, it was wild, but they got me, they, somehow they gave me my first start. Um, but when I, when I got saved, um, I knew that God was calling me into ministry and I, and I, I really felt the urge that he was calling me to come back to ocean beach, uh, to where I was before I went to, to Iowa to, to go to rehab with, and, and ended up in prison and, and all that. But I knew he was calling me to come back to Ocean Beach to reach people that looked uh, very similar to the way I looked, that had a, a rougher upbringing, drug, a drug and alcohol addiction, kind of just going through those 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 same struggles and the same darkness that I was in. Um, I, I wanted to reach people that, that looked like I did. And so when we came back uh, to, 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 to Southern California, to Ocean Beach, that's that's how we kind of designed the church to reach the broken, to reach the hurting, to reach to really reach the people that weren't hearing Jesus. Because when I was here in San Diego before, I was reaching out to people saying, I need help. How can I how can I get through what I'm what I'm dealing with? And, and people were telling me to go to AA or NA and, and these self-help groups, which helped, helped a, a lot of people. I'm not knocking those. But nobody was telling me about Jesus. Yeah. I never heard Jesus Jesus as an option. That Jesus was was what was going to get me through it. And, and once once Jesus laid His hand upon me, 
I knew that that was the answer. I knew that that was the missing thing in, in, in my life. And so I really wanted to come back here to really focus on, on on reaching people that aren't hearing the name Jesus, that aren't hearing the hope and the the salvation, the restoration, uh, the light that Jesus is to, to come and shine in your darkness. So that's why we plan a regeneration church. That's who we typically reach out to. I'd say 70 percent of the people in our church uh, have an alcohol or, or addiction problem coming out of that. Uh, and we've seen God just do some amazing, amazing things. It's a, it's a tougher ministry. Certainly we see people do really, really well, and then they slip and fall. And, and sometimes we never hear from them again. We don't know what happened to them. We see, we see people come and, 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 and do well for a season and then fall. And we, we, you know, we put our hands around them and we pull them back up. Um, we, during COVID, actually since COVID started, We've lost uh, 11 people to overdose, um, nine of them from fentanyl, um, basically because when, when COVID came in Southern California, they shut down the churches, they shut down AA, they shut down NA, they, sh- they shut down all self-help groups, they wow. shut down everything. Wow. And so, so many of these people had nowhere to go. Um, and while we, had, we, we were doing church at our house, we could only have so many people, and a lot of people just chose to, to, to stay away. And, and during that time, we just saw uh, member after member, just just go back mm. to unfortunately go back to the to the darkness and go back to the to the drugs and alcohol, and it's it's been it's been devastating for for us in ministry. Me and my wife, we've we've cried many many tears, prayed many prayers, uh, but but even through that, we've seen God keep people sober, keep people uh, um, going down the right path. Yeah, wow, that is um, we're so thankful for that for the ministry that God has led yeah. you there, and that yeah. um, you know. It's, it's amazing how God can redeem all those horrible years and use them for his mm. glory, your joy, and the joy of a lot of other people. Um, Amen. Uh, he's so good like that. Um, he is. Amen. But he's, he's also brought together part of other parts of what make up Mark Porter. You're a surfer. You're a tattoo artist. Uh, how has that, right. that fit into your ministry over the years? Yeah, it's been, I mean, I was, I was a surfer since I was, uh, since I was 18. So that was kind of the, the love of my life. That's what brought me to, to Southern California. I met some people in Costa Rica on a surfing trip that were in Ocean Beach. And they said, man, you got to come to Ocean Beach. And so again, when my father passed away, that's the, the first place I ran to. And really what surfing does for me now um, is it, it gives me the rest. It gives me, I, when I go out, to, usually when you're surfing, you're, you're just sitting in the water looking at the sky and in San Diego, it's beautiful. There's palm trees on the, on the shore. And it's just, I get to spend time with the Lord. Um, I have so many sermons that have come to my mind so many times of, of prayer um, that I've had out in the lineup. And, and certainly I get to talk with some guys um, about different things. People know here in Ocean Beach that I'm a pastor. So it, it opens some doors as I talk to some of the guys, a rougher community, some, some guys that might not ever come to church, but I get to talk to them out in the, at the beach or in, in the water. Um, and so that's been a, a good thing. But mainly, I think what surfing does for me is it just gives me that time away, the time to really listen and hear from the Lord, um, time to spend. Some people go to the mountains or the river or whatever it might be. Uh, but that's just a place out in the water where I really connect with the Lord. And it gives me that, uh, that great and almost a, a, a time of rest um, mm-hmm. away from the, the, the day-to-day life. Yeah. Uh, and, and, then, and then tattooing was something that just kind of came in about four years ago and did it really to earn? I was doing construction on the side, um, just because of the church we have. We don't. Most people come to our church don't have a lot of money to give or to to tithe, and so I knew I was going to be bivocational. So I was working construction. When COVID hit, I kind of slid into doing tattoos, something that I love to do anyway. Um, and so that kind of jumped off, and I worked at a uh, a tattoo parlor for for two years. We're opening our own tattoo parlor at an Alliance Church here in San Diego at the beginning <laughs> of the year. So that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother. At the Communion Church in San Diego, they they can have a barbershop, a salon, a recording studio, and then the, the pastor Lance Sherwood kept saying, "Why don't you just open a tattoo shop here, Mark?" And here here we are. We just painted it and remodeled it, so we're we're moving forward with that. But nice. what tattooing has done is it's it's been a great ministry, which I never would have when we came into it. I never would have thought this is the way it would go. But you you have somebody usually tattooing somebody sitting in front of you for a, for an hour to two to three hours, and most of these people just kind of open up to you. It's almost like therapy for them. And so we're, we're, they start talking, I start talking, and, and people will just share everything, it seems like, with me at times. And, and at my station, I have some pictures of Jesus around. I, I, just, I don't hide who I am or, or where I've come from. 
And so I've done so much ministry in the tattoo parlor and, and with people that are, I've, I've tattooed. It's been, it's been amazing. I've been able to pray with so many people that come in and get a tattoo. I hear their story. I hear their struggles. And, and I kind of share a little bit of my story. And then it's, it, God has just opened doors there that just continue to blow my mind. Uh, um, and so it's been a, it's been a great financial uh, support for us as a family, but it's also been a great ministry opportunity uh, on the other hand as well. Yeah. Alan and I will come out sometime and get equipping you podcast tattoos from you. Um, no. I was thinking I, we, have, we have a special discount <laughs> for Alliance tattoos. Any, yeah. any Alliance emblem. There we go. Will, will be free to you guys. What oh, an man. What an opportunity. <laughs> I'm ready to go, Terry. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mark, talk to us about how your church plant might be different than a run-of-the-mill Alliance church. But then also mm -hmm. maybe how it's the same. Sure, sure. I think I think we're different in that it's it's it, we're almost a ministry out or a, a missionary outpost. It's it's, it's kind of how we even look at our our ministry is more it's certainly more missional. We're do, we always do outreaches. We're doing a, and not that other churches aren't, uh, but we're 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 trying to specifically target people who wouldn't come into a normal church. Uh, um, and I hate to use even use that word normal. Um, but that, that are, that are not, that they wouldn't feel comfortable walking into a huge elaborate church. We, we keep our church pretty bare for, for a purpose to, to, I, I dress just usually in a t-shirt and, and, and dress down almost to, to try and make people not feel like you have to look a certain type or a certain way to walk in the church. We've had people that come to the church and say, well, I can't go in there. Uh, the, the, the building's going to burn down or, or everything, the, 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 the place is going to kind of catch on fire if I walk in. And I always tell them if, if it didn't catch on fire when I walk in, I think you'll be fine. It's, it's going to be okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, so that way we're different. We're reaching certainly a, a tougher ministry, a lot messier ministry, messier people. We have we have a homeless outreach that we do a meal every third Sunday mm -hmm. before our service. We we offer. I mean, we we service in the evening. Yeah. Uh, we rent from a Baptist church, and so we do a service at five o'clock. But we invite the whole community to come at four o'clock, mostly homeless people, uh, and we'll just serve them a meal. Some will stay for the service, some won't. Uh, but while we have them, we try to just be the hands and feet of Jesus to, to people that, again, might not feel comfortable walking into uh, a more established church. Um, but we just try and get, show them, look, we're not we're not these crazy people. We're, we're not, it's, 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 the place isn't going to fall down when you walk in. And we just want to love on you and, and, and be here for you, let you know that it's OK to come here. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that in that way, we're different in the, in the ways we're similar. We're just we're trying to reach people with the gospel message of Jesus. We're trying to just you know see life transformation, just to, to see Jesus work in the Holy Spirit, do something that. That certainly I could never do, that the church can never do, to introduce them to to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Love it. Love it. Uh, so, you know, <clears throat> we love hearing stories on the Equipping You podcast, especially when it's our pastor kind of biographical uh, conversations. So tell us uh, about a person or two that the, the Lord has enabled you or the church to reach. Uh, just the life change stories are the best. Yeah. So we, we met a guy named uh, Joe, um, probably he's got four years sober. So just around four years ago, uh, we met Joe behind a 7-Eleven in an alley. Um, it was a rainy kind of foggy day in, in San Diego, which you don't have much of. Um, and, and he was there with his dog and he asked for some money. And we said, I'll, I'll give you money. I'll buy you a burrito or I'll give you, uh, you know, go, go buy you something to drink or something to eat. But we don't try to give people money. Um, and then we invited him to church. We said, Hey man, that's cold. I want you to come in. If nothing else, just come get a warm cup of coffee and, and, and see what we're about. And, and he showed up that night and, and, uh, sat in the back and, and he, again, he was homeless. He had a dog toy. He was addicted to meth and, and a heavy alcoholic. Um, and he came, he showed up, uh, we gave the service and we said, Hey, we have a, a men's group that meets on Monday and then we have service next Sunday. We'd love to have you come back. And he didn't come to the men's group, um, but he came back the next Sunday for, for service. Um, during that service, I don't remember what I preached on, but what he always tells me, he says, Mark, you quoted Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. And he said, those words stuck to my heart. Mm. He said that the thing I needed most in that time was rest. I'd been running and running and running and going. And, and, and Joe, backstory on him, Joe was a, um, he had signed a triple A contract with the Houston Astros to play major leagues his whole wow. life growing up. He wanted to be a major league ball player. When he signed with the Astros, within two months, he got two DUIs. This is in the late 80s. 
early nineties, he, he got two DUIs. They didn't really know, know what to do with people at that time with substance abuse problems. So they just cut him. He, they let him go. And mm. as he got cut, he saw all his dreams just, just shattered. And so he mm. just went further and further into this whole spiraling out of control ends up back in San Diego. He grew up, grew up uh, down here in Southern California and had been on the street ever since um, kind of would get it together for a while, but just, just could never fully to get it together. So he hears me preach that night. I don't even think he said those words. I think Jesus spoke those words to him because it wasn't in my notes. I even looked back and I said, Joe, I never mentioned that, but if that's what you heard, that's what you heard. I can do that. man. So, I can do that. Amen. Amen. It was, it was beautiful. And so, so that night he hears that the second time he's at church, he hears that we pray for him. He says, Mark, I need some help. I, I, I got to get, I got to stop the way I'm living. And so we prayed for him. We laid hands on, we prayed for him and he gets delivered that night. He doesn't go to rehab. He doesn't go to a treatment center. He, he's still living on the street with nothing. And he never drinks again and he never uses drugs Praise again. God. He, wow. he, he, uh, we, we, me and my wife would make extra meals as we're eating. We bring him meals. We'd find him, you know, I kind of knew where he was kind of hiding out um to, to to stay warm uh, we bring him meals bring dog his his, his his dog floyd some food a church up in temecula which is about an hour north of of us where the um where our um uh what do you want to call it um district office is mm-hmm. yeah yeah they gave us a, a van um a church called um uh, i can't remember what the name of the church is um, but they give us a van and, and so we give this to joe just to get him off off the street so he starts living in this van he needs a hip replacement he gets a hip replacement he, he gets a job at home depot he finally gets an apartment now joe's got four years sober he shows up every single day at church sets up the chair still for us he's always asking me what, what can i do for you mark how can i help yeah, out yeah. He, he, he tells everybody that comes into home depot about Jesus and about his story and about where he is and, and invites him to church. He, I think he invites more people to church than I do. Um, <laughs> That's awesome. But it's, it's just an amazing story of, of what God, and he, he gives all the glory to God. He, he, he would never tell you I got sober or I did this and that in my life. He would always say Jesus came yeah. in and, and completely transformed me and, and is, is, is unashamed at what he, what he tells people about the Lord and the gospel. Mm-hmm. Amen. Love Remarkable that. story. Amen. So, Mark, what is it that most breaks your heart in ministry, and especially in the kind of ministry that you're involved in? Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's the it's when 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 men or women um, get touched by the Spirit of God, get get pulled in, um, do well for a season, and, and then for whatever reason, fall back into the to the old way of life, fall back into mm-hmm. to with most of our people, it's drugs and alcohol, um, and, and just you know. I, I did it so many times, not that I got saved and fell back into it, but I, I, I relapsed so many times in my life um, and, and went back to that and the guilt and the shame and, and the mm. discouragement that comes along with that and not wanting to come back to the church because I don't want people to, to talk about me or to think I don't have it all together. And I always try to, to tell people, none of us have it together. That's why we're at church. That's why we need Jesus, mm-hmm. uh, that there's no perfect people here. So you don't, don't ever walk in with your head down, down low. You'll, you'll miss what Jesus is, 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 is doing. Um, but I think that it's just so hard to watch people slide back into a to a, to a way of life that they know that's not right for them, and that we certainly know that's not right for them. And, and so we're constantly praying. We have a guy that's back in jail again right now. We have a, a, a young lady that had been doing well that is that won't leave her house right now. Um, that has just kind of slid back into into the pull of the the enemy and and, and the, the the lure of drugs and alcohol, especially in this the, the area of San Diego we're in. Ocean Beach is known if if you want. If you want any kind of illicit drug, you can go to Ocean Beach and, and get it. The people of San Diego know that. And so that's kind of what we're we're battling against. That it's it literally any drug you want is is right outside the street. You can go down to the corner and you're gonna find whatever you want to get um, at a decent price. Um, and so that lure is, is is hard for some people to break. We know Jesus can do it, we trust in Jesus to do it, but it's just a it's just a heavy, heavy burden on some people's lives. Yeah. It is a heavy burden. So Lots of ups and downs in ministry. You've persevered through a lot. Mm-hmm. The Lord has taught you a lot. What are some lessons the Lord's been teaching you about Christian life and ministry too recently? Yeah, I think the, the Lord has really been working on me in in, in the, the the Sabbath, um, and really, what what does it mean to Sabbath well? What does it mean to to rest well? I'm I'm kind of I'm. I don't know if I would say I'm high strung. My wife would probably say I'm high strung. I'm just, I'm, I'm really active. I, I, I'm always trying to, I'm always doing something. I'm yeah, always yeah. on the go. Even when I'm trying to rest, I'm, I'm thinking about how do I, 
what do I need to do next? Where do I go? So it takes a long time for me to to really just sit. And, and, and that's why I think surfing is good for me because when I'm surfing, I can I, there's nothing around, no distractions, nothing going on. Um, but what does it mean to Sabbath well? Is I think really what the Lord has been trying to press into me. And, and I've been looking at, at Sabbath as, as worship, Sabbath as um, really trusting the Lord to do the things that I certainly can't do. Um, so wait on him, which is, is, is really hard for me to do. I like to, again, go and go and go. Um, and then the Sabbath as, as renewal as well, that, that in Sabbath, it's not just, just, just sitting and, and not doing anything. It's, it's really let, letting the Lord and letting the spirit renew some things in me. Um, and, and it's really been, again, it's been a hard thing for me to do lately, but it's been something that's been beneficial um, and beautiful um, as I can sit and really hear and feel the Lord doing the work that he needs to do in me. Amen. That's a good word for I all of us. A lot of people are going to relate to that Absolutely. for sure. Absolutely. Yep. Mm. So I got to frame this next question just to uh, <clears throat> let everybody know uh, that we're we're recording this on December twelfth, twenty twenty two. You're hearing it in uh, late June or beyond of twenty twenty three. So here in December, I'm asking you this important question, Mark. Will the San Diego Padres win the World Series this season? Terry, I'm, I'm not a betting man, but if I were, I would say that would be a pretty that would be a pretty good bet. I would uh, with with the way we're rolling right now. I think the Lord is shining heavily on the San Diego Padres. I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> All right. There you go. All right. You heard yeah. it here first. Wow. Okay. Alan, yes. Alan's a little bitter as a Red Sox fan that you just got <laughs> Bogarts or yeah, whatever his I, name I am. is. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yes. I'll tell you what. If uh, if they do, the day that they uh, the day they win the World Series, I will repost this episode of the podcast that day <laughs> with noting Amen. that you Amen. predicted it yeah. in December right, of 2022. Right. <laughs> All right. I'll either be a prophet or you'll just erase this whole podcast. <laughs> well, there is a possibility they could win it. Yeah. yeah well, a little they could, yeah. strange yeah. little insight on my family. I have two sons and we have a little text group. And every year it's named uh, whatever that year it is, uh, Red Sox World Champions. So it's like this year it was 2022 Red Sox World yeah. Champions, and it didn't happen. How'd that, so, go, how'd that go for you? It didn't go well. It yeah. hasn't gone. It's been yeah. about four years. But anyhow, we always name our text group that way because there's always hope when the baseball season starts, right? right. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Amen. Well, well, those of those of us who are National League fans, in the bottom line of it all, we say anyone but the Dodgers, please. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm thankful we took them out. That that was our World Series this year. We yeah, beat the Dodgers yeah, finally in the right. playoffs. I know that yeah. feeling with the Yankees for sure. We yeah, thank you. That was wonderful. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Uh, Amen. Want you and Lindsay to know how much we appreciate uh, your ministry, all that you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. Uh, boy, you talk about mm -hmm. Sabbath, and I'm sure you guys just pour out and pour out and pour out as you keep pouring into the lives of people. So uh, mm. we know that what you're doing has its ups and downs, but we just want to salute you and say how grateful we are for you and the ministry that you have there. Yeah, seriously. Well, thank you. You know, I know you. you and I have had limited interaction, but I've always appreciated mm. the grace of God is on your life. And uh, you you speak Jesus, man, and I love it. Yep. I Amen. love it so much. Thanks for being authentic thank you, with Alan. him. Yep. So, yeah, I appreciate you guys, and we'll continue to pray for the – for the office and that everything would go smoothly there. We appreciate everything you guys have done for us, and the push and church planning and just the support you've always given us. So thank yeah. you guys very much. Happy to do it. So uh, great to have you on the podcast today. Thank you guys. Well, once again, equipping you proves to be a center for leadership training and sports prognostication. Mm. Alan. Yes. I would count on the fact that we will be better at leadership training than sports prognostication. Yeah, you might change that uh, opinion if the San Diego Padres happen to win the 2023 World Series. So we'll be all be keeping an eye on that. Well, I will keep my word to Mark and repost the episode and mention that he predicted it on December 20th or December 12th, 2022. If and it happens. We'll if it happens in November or December of next year when we're recording season eleven, 
we will wear San Diego Padres hats in honor of that event. All right. That's fair, too. I will do that. Sounds, I will do that. Sounds good. I can commit to that. If, if Mark comes through like that, that would be worth, worth uh, uh, honoring for sure. So Seriously, love this man and his wife and their investment in the community. Mm. They're a part of God's using them in uh, powerful ways and really grateful that uh, we got to hear some of these stories today. Yeah, so yeah seriously. I love the opportunity to interact with our Alliance pastors in here and uh, looking forward to future seasons of pastor bios. Yeah, one size doesn't fit all. Nope. When it comes to uh, Alliance pastors. Uh, and we're all different. We're all unique. God created us all, wired us all, and is graciously using us all to advance uh, the cause of his gospel. And that's one of the things that we hear over and over in these biographical interviews. Mm -hmm. So, end of the season. Wow. Next time you hear us, we'll be on two special episodes. That's right, in the summer of of 2023. 2023. And uh, we look forward to that. We thank you for listening. Until then, keep the faith.